Welcome back. Today was day two in the Waffle House shooting trial in Nashville, Tennessee. And today the jury heard a lot of testimony from law enforcement officials who described the 34-hour manhunt that took place right after the shooting. Court TV legal correspondent Chanley Painter is in Nashville and has more on what happened today in court. On day two of the Travis ranking trial, the prosecution called more than a dozen witnesses focusing testimony on how the authorities processed the crime scene, how they identified a suspect, and how they tracked ranking down in the hours after the mass shooting. The day started with the testimony of one more restaurant patron, Kayla Shaw. She described the trauma of the incident to the jury and how she was cut by the broken glass when the first gunshots were fired into that Waffle House. All of a sudden, and I do mean sudden, there was a loud pop over my left shoulder. There was a, I felt something on my face. I didn't know at the time it was debris, it was glass. Her description of the chaos at the scene that morning was echoed by another witness, Sergeant Daniel Polk, who responded to the scene. I realized at that point that we had a, a very chaotic scene. Um, it was, it was some, I mean, we see a lot of bad crime scenes, but that one, it, it looked like a war zone. That morning at the Waffle House, investigators identified a truck registered to ranking in the parking lot. In this truck, police located paycheck stubs with ranking's address, showing he lived within a mile from the crime scene. A massive manhunt was launched to locate the defendant. Special Agent Kyle Williams told the jury his team would later become aware of a sighting of the suspect, and that led to ranking's capture. Uh, knowing that it was not police, I uh, made myself known. Metro Police, show me your hands. I had my gun out of the holster at that point. When I did that, I rose as I was saying Metro Police and observed Mr. Ranking's head pop out from behind a tree. Attorney Luke Evans questioned Detective Philip Clare about his interview with bystander turned hero James Shaw Jr. at the hospital, all to contradict Shaw's testimony Monday that Ranking called him a racial slur at the time of the crime. So, Detective, during your interview on April 25th, 2018, with James Shaw Jr., did he state to you two times that he did not recall Travis Ranking saying anything, or he did not believe Travis Ranking said anything racial? That's correct. Coming up on day three, we expect the prosecution to rest its case after calling one more witness. Then it will be the defense's turn as they have to put on proof that ranking did not know right from wrong during the crime. I'll send it back to you. Thanks to Chanley Painter. Now, as Chanley told us, the first witness who took the stand this morning was Kayla Shaw. She's one of the surviving victims in the shooting. She told the jury about how she fell to the floor and played dead when the shooting began. Let's listen to some more of her testimony now. Early in the morning on Sunday, April 22nd, um, where were you going and how did you end up at the Waffle House? Well, we had, like I said, we were leaving a lounge and um, wanted to get something to eat. Unfortunately, Waffle House was the only thing open and Chelsea and Alexis wanted that. So we went there and um, we went in and ordered our food. Well, they ordered their food. And we went back to the car that I drove there. I bagged it up in the second row of parking spaces. And we waited. Then I went in to get their food. All right. All right. You didn't you didn't have any notification that the food was ready. You just waited in the car for a few minutes and then went in when you thought, okay, probably the food's about right. Right, approximately about ten minutes we waited in the car. And I went back in because I have the stronger feet, and we all had on heels. They didn't want to get back out of the car. Right. So, so, uh, so they stayed in the car, and you walked in by yourself? Yes. When you walked in, what did you do? I sat at the bar area, and I just stood around for a moment because I figured it wasn't ready just yet, plus they were very busy. All right. Uh, as you sat at the bar, did you talk to anybody? I didn't. I was observing my surroundings. I did notice um, Tia and Mr. De Silva in the window. 
I thought it was sweet how they interacted with each other, actually. I noticed how he was just about ordering her food for her. thought that was sweet. All right. And then tell us what what happened, that uh, how this all started with regards to the shooting. Well, like I said, I was uh, standing there, well, sitting and standing, a bit of both, at the time, waiting for their food. And uh, all of a sudden, and I do mean sudden, there was a loud pop over my left shoulder. There was a, I felt something on my face. I didn't know at the time it was debris, it was glass. But um, in a split second, I wanted to turn over my left shoulder actually and uh, curse some people out because I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know where, where this force was coming from on the side of my face. But instead, I made the decision to just fall to my side. And then I continued to hear what I know now was gunshots ring out. And uh, I heard the cook behind the counter say to take cover someone was shooting. All right. So when you, when you went down on the ground, did you just go down in the middle of the floor? No, I did not. I fell away from the impact. So I fell to my right side and I fell on my uh, shoulder. All right. And um, you had been seated at some of the uh, chairs right there at the counter. Correct. The folks that, that order and actually eat at the counter or if you're just sitting there waiting for your food for takeout, right? Right, the bar area. All right, so in relation to where the chair was and the counter, where did you fall? In a very uh, small and uncomfortable slot. I had to slide under the bar and um, if you sat at a Waffle House you know that the bar stools do not move so I had to slide around the chair cushion and in between the bar area so I actually hit quite a bit of things on the way down but yeah I fell in that area. All right so you did not fall into the area where people walk you were between the stools and the the solid partition that was the where the count what the counter sits on. Correct. But then under the counter as well. Right. All right. All right. We're, when you heard those other shots, what did you do? I made the decision to lie still and breathless. I decided to play dead because I figured that was my only chances. Where am I going to go? I have nowhere to hide. I'm exposed. I play dead. All right. Um, did you ever look up? Unfortunately, uh, a moment I did glance up, I seen Mr. Ryan King's puny scrotum in that moment because unfortunately he was unclothed, just a jacket. But, but you could not see his face at that point? No. That right? All right. And then after you peeked up, did you then go back to keeping your eyes closed and laying still? I did. I was, I was very still after that. All right. Did you hear more shots at that point? I did not. Okay. What was the next thing you heard? I heard rustling. I heard furniture moving. That's what I would say. And uh, then a dead silence. Okay. Still. All right. When you heard the wrestling, you had your eyes closed. Is that correct? I did. So that's why you didn't see what was happening. Uh, when the fight was going on. Correct. I did not. All right. All right. How long did you lay there still, to the best of your recollection? Um, it had to be about uh, 45, 30 seconds. Right. At some point, you got up. Why did you get up? I got up because I heard people moving. I heard people behind the counter moving, and I thought I had to take my chance to take cover. I did not know where the shooter was at the time. All right, so when you got up, what did you do? I got up and I, uh, I ran around the counter to where the workers work. And as I was running around the counter, I unfortunately slipped in Mr. De Silva's blood. Um, right, right where I fell is where Shatia was sitting and I was face to face with her dismembered leg. 
Do you see your car in this picture before we even start the video? Yes, I do. If you would just kind of touch the screen where your car is, right there. Okay. All right, I think we can take that. Can we? Okay, great. Um, and, and we're going to go ahead and start this video, and if you could just narrate it for us and explain where you are and what you're doing. I'm getting out of the car at this point, approaching the Waffle House, about to uh, see if the food is ready. I never noticed that he was pulling up right as I was walking in. I'm going into the Waffle House. Uh, standing around waiting on service. We are not actually waiting on service because like I said, we had already ordered, but giving them time because they were busy. Checking out the scene. As I said, they were busy, so I was just standing around, giving them time. Notice Mr. De Silva and Tia. As I said, I thought it was sweet that uh, he basically ordered her food for her. <laughs> I never noticed BJ and James because, you know, I didn't know he was about to save my life, so whatever. waiting because I just knew our I just knew that their order wasn't ready so I never really even uh, approached a worker because I could obviously you could see what's ready and what's not ready and our their food was so I was just sitting waiting a little impatient actually Especially for someone who didn't even want to be at the Waffle House. I don't eat Waffle House, let the record show, never did. Stand up, boom, that's the sudden, uh, yeah. Like I said, I fell. There was, a, there was a, a slight moment where I had to decide if I was gonna turn around and explode out of anger or I was gonna fall. Happy I decided to fall. I'm hiding, I'm breathless at this moment.
I hear them. I have no clue what's going on right now. I'm waiting. Because like I said, I don't know what's going on. My eyes are closed. <coughs> Didn't know where the shooter was. Best thing to do was just continue to be still like I had been. This time, I'm hearing people move, so I'm about to get up. I'm positioning myself to get up. As I said, I have to move around the bar, the cushions, the stationary seat. I'm getting up, about to run around the bar, frantically. I slip and I fall, and <clears throat> Mr. De Silva's blood. And what did you slip on? Mr. De Silva's blood. I was running on my heels, that was slippery. Um, I fell, like I said. And in, the, in this moment, I'm breathing, I'm thinking, I'm afraid, I'm seeing his blood. I'm trying to assess myself for any damages, and I'm seeing uh, Tia's leg. Uh, I did say three words over her leg before I uh, left out of there. And like I said as well, I was assessing myself because I, now I have blood all over me, so. I didn't know if I was hit, my adrenaline was rushing. I just knew I had to go. And I got up and I and I honestly I I lost it for a second. I lost it for a second. And then I was like, no, nah, I gotta go. I gotta go. Fall flat at the door in heels. Dodge the car, get into the center, start it up, I get out of it. I go around the curve, the curve entrance, and yeah, I proceed down the street. All right. You said that you had injuries from glass. Where were the injuries from the glass? The injuries from the glass were on my face. Um, like I said, it was just minor little scratches and lacerations. That was physical. The mental damage is forever. And um, with regards to the glass, was there a point where you or someone else was pulling glass actually out of your face? Yes, there was actually. Um, a small piece lodged in my face, yeah. All right. But you were treated and released, so you got some some right I did. I had bandages on my uh, face. I had a sling from my shoulder that was uh, very bruised. Mm -hmm. all right. And did all this happen in Nashville, Davidson County? It did. I've been back in 2018. Just incredible uh, what those people went through. It's time for a break. When we return, we'll take you on the docket with a look ahead for the sentencing of former police officer Kim Potter. That's next. <laughs>